Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome back to another Django RM tutorial. In this tutorial, we take a first look at transaction atomicity. This is going to be better served identifying a problem that we need to solve and then utilizing transaction atomicity to solve that problem. So let's take a look at an example. Here I've mocked up a simple example of a bank application. A user wants to transfer money from their bank account into someone else's bank account. They want to make a payment to someone else. So this application uh, allows the user to type in their name, the payer, and then identify who they want to pay and then the amount of money that they want to pay them. So behind the scenes, we have a database here, user A and user B. Those are current customers of the bank and they all have a balance of a hundred pound. So you can imagine uh, user A wants to give um, user B, the pay, um, some money, wants to pay them 10 pound. So we submit that and then we have a look here and we can see that user B has now 10 pound more in their bank account and user A has 10 pound less. So here behind the scenes, we collect the information from the form clean it up, and then we start to prepare some statements here to be executed on the database. So first of all, we collect the information about the payer, the person paying, and then we can go ahead and subtract the amount of money that they're paying from their balance, their existing balance, and then we save. And of course, then what we do is we collect the user's information that we want to pay or the person we want to pay, the payee, we collect their information, and then we increment or we add the new amount that's being paid to their existing balance and save. So nothing out of the ordinary. Let's just reset the balance of user A and B. Now, if for example, user A wanted to pay user C hundred pound, we know that user C doesn't exist. User A does have a hundred pound to uh, pay. So let's just go ahead and submit. So we are presented with a problem, which you might imagine because user C doesn't exist. However, if we go into the bank account details here and refresh, you can see that user A, the monies has been taken away from their balance. This problem exists because if we look at the code, you can see that J Django is executing this piece of code first, which is updating the payer balance before it then adds the new balance to the payee. So this is where the problem currently resides in the example. So we can now introduce the idea that Django's default behavior is to run in auto commit mode. So that means that by default, each query is immediately committed to the database. So we have a problem. It's the Django's default behavior to run in auto commit mode. User A's balance was reduced, even if the payee does not exist. So what's the solution? Let's think about database transactions as a workflow. So what we had previously is transaction one that was updating the payer. So we reduced their balance. So that's the first thing that we performed and we committed that to the database. So we saved that to the database. That was transaction one. And then Django then looked at transaction two and that was to update the payee. So the person receiving the money. So we updated their bank account. So what we saw here in transaction two was a problem. And that's where we returned a problem in our example. So we didn't go ahead and commit T2. But if we look at this workflow here, we can see that we've already committed um, transaction one where we updated and reduced the balance of the payer. So let's now think of a database transition as one or more SQL operations that are treated as a unit. So all operations should be executed successfully in order to call the transaction successful. And this is the answer to our problem. We now want to take those individual transactions as we had before, and we want to treat them as a unit of transactions. So we want to make sure that both of them are successful 
So both of our queries are successful in order for us to actually say that the transaction was successful, for us to actually commit everything to the database. So let's now think about our two queries as two transactions. Here we're going to perform the first query and make a save point. So the point of that is that if there is a problem with the preceding query, then what we can do, because we've made a save point, we know what we did previously. So we can kind of roll back the update. So here, for example, we can perform this action of updating the customer payer data. So the balance, we remove the, the amount from their bank account, we make a save point. We know what we're going to do. Uh, everything is okay at this point, um, but it's not been fully committed yet. Then we move over to the second query and then we try and perform this. Now, if this is committed and everything is okay, it means that everything will be saved. And now that is one transaction. So once everything is successful, all the queries are successful and no errors have occurred, then we could say that this transaction is now successful. Everything has been saved. All the queries have been performed. Now, if one or of these queries were to fail, it would mean that we roll back everything. None of these queries would get committed to the database. So we can say that a transaction is a sequence of one or more SQL operations that are treated as a unit. All operations should be executed successfully in order to call the transaction successful. And we've seen that there's mechanisms in place so that if a query or operation does fail, we can roll back utilizing save points, for example. So this idea of transactions has a lot of different theory, one of them being ACID properties. So transactions ideally have four properties commonly known as ACID. So these are just standard sets of properties aimed to guarantee database transactions are processed reliably. So the top one here, atomicity, it means that you guarantee that either all of the transaction succeeds or none of it does. So we want to make sure, uh, thinking about our atomicity principle here, we want to make sure that this all happens or none at all. So let's just now put that into context here in Django and actually ask Django to perform this type of operation. So we now want to tell Django that we want this to this transaction to be atomic. We want to run these as a unit, these two queries as a unit. So let's go ahead and let's from Django DB import transaction. So we can flag or tag queries, statements, functions um, for atomic transactions in two ways. We first of all have the declarator here, transaction atomic. So if I would apply this, it's implying that any of these queries here, um, they should all be applied as a unit. So if one of them fails, um, it should roll back and not apply any of these changes. So we can also apply this as a context manager. So with transaction.atomic, and then we identify the queries that we want to run. So let's just apply this now to our situation again. Right, so going back to our example, uh, let's just uh, update the monies. Right, so both have a hundred. So let's go back <clears throat> and try this again. So I just refresh user A and user B. So let's just go for 50, just make sure it's working okay still. Okay, so that works. So let's just try user a and use a C again, for example. So C does not exist. Let's just go for 50, uh, press submit. So we are still receiving the error message, um, but let's go back and refresh. And you can now see that because we're running the queries as a unit, users A's balance does not get changed. So here we can say now that we've applied or we've considered atomicity within our application. We've guaranteed now that either all the transactions succeed or none of them does. Now, if we look through the other ACID principles here, consistency, this ensures that you guarantee that all data will be consistent. Isolated guarantees that all transactions will occur in isolation. So no transaction will be affected by any other transaction. Well, this is an interesting point. So the question here is that 
how can we ensure that no transaction will be affected by any other transaction? Just take this example. Our database has user A, a balance of 100. Imagine we had three or a thousand requests all coming into our database at the exactly the same time, trying to update the balance of user A. Potentially what might happen is that request here might capture the current instance of 100 and it might plus 100, but at the same time request here might do the same thing. So what you end up with is potentially errors in the actual balance data because we're trying to perform concurrent operations on di a different set of data. This was a good excuse to point you towards the Django documentation and have a read through the query set API reference. So eventually you'll get down to select for update. And this is what I wanted to point out here. So select for update allows us to return a query set that will lock rows until the end of the transaction. So essentially here, when we want to perform a request on some data in the database, we can lock it in so that we can perform the operation and no other operation can be performed on that data. So going back to our example here, request one would lock in this information, perform the request, and then the second request could then perform an operation on the actual data at that point of time. So by doing so, we are moving towards this idea of isolated. So no transaction will be affected by any other transaction. So we can apply the select for update in our application very simply. So I've removed the collecting the customer from the transaction atomic here, and I've select utilizes a select for update. So we get the actual user, and then we then perform our operations. And of course, these operations must be committed as a unit. So they are wrapped with our transaction atomic. So in short, atomic or atomicity, is the defining property of a database transaction. So here we utilize Atomic to create a block of code within which the atomicity of our database is guaranteed. We saw that we can apply this very simply as a declarator or using a context manager within our code. And there we go, that's a first look at transaction atomicity. So I do hope that was useful. Um, not the most cohesive presentation, but hopefully I've got the main points over to you. And now you can have a look at through some of that documentation that I mentioned, as well as reading further into the subject. So as per normal, I thank you very much for listening. And I do hope to see you in the next tutorial.